Hi, and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn, yet again another special location as I've got a guest here, uh, Tim Lawrence of Cascade Brewing Company out of Portland, Oregon. Correct. Tim, thanks for coming on. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah. This is great. So, we were talking a little bit as we were getting set up, and I was quite surprised to hear that Cascade's got a pretty prominent distribution footprint across the, the country. Can you talk a little bit about uh, Cascade, kind of the origins of them? And Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, just take it from there. Cascade Brewing uh, has been, in essence, has been around since 1998. Started by a gentleman named Art Lawrence, who was one of the, one of the pioneers of the craft brewery industry. Back in the early 80s, he helped start Portland Brewing Company. Uh, he and along with some other key individuals in the, in the industry, the Widmer Brothers and McMiniman Brothers, all lobbied the state of Oregon to help change the brew pub, brew pub laws in 1982, which allowed people to have craft breweries and brew pubs. Mm -hmm. And that was really significant. That in 82? 1982. Wow. And so in 1984, he started Portland Brewing Company. Uh, he later left that and start, opened up another place where he always wanted to have kind of a family restaurant pub. And in 1998, he opened up what was called the Raccoon Lodge. And that was a restaurant with a beautiful 10-barrel brew kettle. Okay. Uh, and they were making some really, really nice ales uh, and, uh, you know, specializing. They had some porters and stouts, but it was mostly in the, the pale ale category. Yeah. They, they, all of a sudden, the hop race kind of came into fruition, you know, in the 2000s. Yeah. And it was, let's see, how prices, big, yeah. how hoppy we can get. And with a 10-barrel system, it really wasn't feasible to be able to participate and play in that game. And so his brewmaster, Ron Gansberg, who has been with, who was with Portland Brewing Company uh, before that, and he was at one of the original breweries for Bridgeport, which is another okay. yeah. brewery in Portland. So he's been in the industry quite a while as well. He had a big wine background. And at that point he said, let's, let's take a look at what's going on here in Oregon. We have a great wine industry. So there's a lot of empty barrels or barrels yeah. that can be used. And there's a lot of amazing fresh fruits. Um, blueberries, strawberries, apricots, you know, you name it. Oregon's uh -huh. got a plethora, uh, or the Pacific Northwest is a plethora of, of great Absolutely. fruits. So they said, let's start playing around with some barrel-aged beers. And fast forward to 2007, they started really making some nice sour beers. They entered the Great American Beer Festival with a sour beer in 2007, and it was the Creek. Yeah. And Creek won. the first beer I think a lot of people had heard of from, right. from Cascade. Yeah, and that was kind of their big one. In 2007, they, they, they entered it in, GABF, and it took a silver. And all of a sudden, they're like, whoa, I think we're onto something here. 2008, they entered into a category that had 45 entrants at that time, uh, the sour barrel-aged sour category. That category last year had somewhere around 150, yeah, I think. Yeah, that was huge. Just amazing amount. But they that year in 2008, they took a gold medal with um, with the Bourbonic Plague and a silver medal with Vlad the Impaler. Okay. And so those two beers, again, took Cascade from here to here and put them on the map. And from then on, it was, it was a very heavily, highly allocated item. It was hard to get. Because yeah. again, brewing out of a very small facility, um, not many places to put the barrels. Yeah. In 2010, Art bought another piece of property on the east side of town on 10th and Southeast Belmont, which is now where the Cascade Barrel House is located. Yeah. Which many people that have been to Portland have gone to the Barrel House. Myself included, yeah. <laughs> Great little spot. And uh, that's where they were going to do all their barrel storage and do their big barrel program. Within three years, they started to outgrow that spot. And a year and a half ago, we opened up what's now called the Blending House which is a large location on the west side of Portland where we now house and hold over 1,500 oak casks plus wow. nine fooders, uh, which each hold about 1,500 gallons each. Okay. So that's kind of Cascade in a nutshell from where we started to where we're at and we're continuing to grow. Um, you brought up, you know, we're now in a large amount of states. Right. We, we were heavily allocated, like I said, for so long and there was such a demand. Originally, we had New York, Boston, California were really our big markets. And you also did a direct shipping business for a while, too, which is how a lot of people got to try your beer outside of Portland. It was a, it was a great business until <laughs> the federal government 
kind of put the, the, the stop Kibosh. to it for, yeah. for everybody. And it wasn't just us. And it was just one of those things. I think it was it was allowed and tolerated. And then it got to a point where the government said, this isn't, can't, we can't do this. So that that put a big, that was a uh, that was a big hit for a while because mm -hmm. to our to our overall business. And did that uh, foment kind of you guys looking to expand your distribution, or you got was that already underway? No, I think at that point it was we got to the point where we were now producing enough beer to satisfy the demands. And I, you brought up a great point. That mail order exposed a tremendous amount of people to the brand, but we couldn't satisfy them because we could, they couldn't get enough, and then all of a sudden we right. couldn't ship to them. So we had people from you know Illinois to Minnesota to Ohio saying, I used to buy it online, how do I get it? Then distributors started getting more involved. I would say the, the real big thing that really kind of uh, catapulted us to a, a much larger distribution network was the Craft Brewers Conference a year and a half ago in Portland. Oh, right. CDC, which was in Portland, brought a lot of distributors to town. A lot of people went to the Barrel House and they fell in love with the beer. They heard about it and literally, of all the distributors that we have now, I haven't had to call one and say, hey, will you take us? It's all of them calling us, so we want you. And in several states, there's been more than one distributor and it's been a tough decision. I don't want to say good no. problem to have. Right. Yeah. I don't want to say no to somebody, but at the same time, I can only have one distributor. Right. Interesting. So you guys, uh, Cascade started in 07, you said? Started doing sours in about 05. 05, okay. Like 2000, or 1998 is when Cascade Brewing, the brewery itself. Well, that was, yeah, I, I was getting yeah. a little confused with the years then. So you guys transitioned to starting doing sours, and now you guys are certainly primarily sour. Are you only sour so we are we are still a 10 barrel brewing facility we have not increased it so that's that's kind of one of our limitations of where we're at um, but we do about 90 wow. percent is all sours we do some phenomenal non-sours that our brewers at the Rocky Lodge have been working on some pale ales some black and white stouts uh, uh, some sessions it's some really really nice stuff but we don't have the capability at this point to to distribute that. Uh, right. Does it get packaged or is it no, all? No, just, okay. just in draft. Okay. Um, but I, I, I talk with them all the time. I, and we have some great beers that I'd love to take out. Uh, we just, we're now so focused on our on our sours. Yeah, but I've known you guys as pretty much a primarily sour only brewery mm -hmm. for forever. Until right now, I, I didn't think that you guys did anything other than sour beers. And it sounds like you do, but it's right. pretty much for the local scene. It is um, all for, like I said, it's, it's in one of our two pubs, at the, either at the, the, the Raccoon Lodge, which we're changing the name. It's going to be the Lodge at Raccoon, excuse me, the Lodge at Cascade Brewing, and then the Cascade Barrel House. And so, but like, if you go to either one of those locations, you'll be able to taste anywhere between three to five different non-sours that I would put up against a lot of other beers out there, uh, but we just, we're not there yet. Right, so in 05, the sour landscape was was really different. I mean, vastly different, like you said, how, I mean, Belgian even three Landers. years, yeah. That and maybe a few uh, California-based sours and maybe Jolly Pumpkin, and, and that's probably about mm -hmm. it in, yeah. in the country. I mean, I'm sure I'm forgetting some, some people, but, um, so when you guys were starting out with Sour, one thing that you guys still to this day uh, do is you pretty much do a lactobacillus souring only. You do brewer's yeast and yes. lactobacillus, right? Right, and we create our own lactobacillus uh, in-house. So it's not, it's a proprietary recipe. It's something that we closely guard, uh, but it's something because then we know that we can control that, that aspect of it. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it uh, was going to be my next question. Why, why is it that you guys have only used lacto? And also, am I right in that you guys only use Saccharomyces as well? You guys yes. don't do any Britannomyces beers either? Pretty much, yes. Okay. And uh, the reason is just because you, you want to control the, the, mm -hmm. the end product? And, and it, that's what's worked for us. Yeah. So uh, again, we've got, broke, yeah. we've got a, a group of, I call them kind of crazy mad scientists. I mean, the guys that are our blending house that are coming out with some amazing combinations of, of different beers. And um, I, they know what they want to, what, they, what the outcome, what they want to get to. And um, I think the really, we want to try and stay as consistent as possible as well too. And one thing, you know, knock on wood, 
uh, there's a lot of other breweries that over time have had to maybe dump product or it wasn't really where it's at. We haven't had to do that. Uh, because, really? Because of the fact that, again, we, we will not release a beer until it's ready. Um, I, I have a kind of a sell sheet that lists all of our releases throughout the year, and I put up at the top, it's like, this is our schedule. But really, the beer tells us when it's ready. We don't tell it when it's ready. Okay. And so we want to make sure, you know, right, Cranberry, I wanted to have last month so we could start selling it to our distributors, getting ready for the holiday season. Brewers came back to me and said, it's going to be next month. Okay. On average, how long does a beer take for you guys to, to our, do? Our product will age anywhere between 12 to 24 months before it leaves our facility. Wow. So no kettle sours. Everything is oak barrel soured uh, or in the barrels or in the fooders. Okay. And is everything then uh, barrel fermented as well? Or do you guys ferment, uh, do like a primary fermentation and then transfer over to? A little both. I mean, we'll have, there's also the bottle fermentation as well too. So we'll, we'll add a little bit of yeast before it goes into the bottle. Then it goes into the warm room, starts another kind of secondary fermentation and you know, additional alcohol and CO2 is that is. One other thing that I think separates Cascade from a lot of other sour breweries is uh, yeah, this one I'm looking at right here, 9.8% alcohol, 9.3% alcohol. I mean, it, this is like, you guys are not only uh, one of the first sour breweries in the States, but you might still only be the <laughs> Imperial Sour Brewery. Is there a reason why you guys made such like ass-kicking beers from a... No, because I mean, we, so we, we have, you know, we have quite a few that are in the sevens as well, too, and it just depends on what type of Play-Doh or I mean, what, because we've got, you know, we make three different types of blondes. Uh, you know, we have uh, a lower Play-Doh one. We've got, you know, probably in the 14 to that 15. That kind of base beer Right, and then we've blending. got a 18, 19, then we've got a 21, 22, and so it's, or higher. And so it's, you know, some of our bigger beers, which we have right here, we are using some of our stronger, stronger blondes and stronger reds. Uh, however, we do have, you know, some lower wheats and, and, and you know, our, our blondes, just our base blondes. Okay. That we, some of our best beers are from. Okay. Yeah, just something that I had always uh, been of note that yeah. I would look like, oh my gosh. Well, the Bourbonic. I mean, some of them are like really high. Bourbonic, I think it was 12 or 13. And, yeah. And so, yeah, there's some, you're right, there are some big beers. Yeah.